Norway, the country of fish, oil, and the most expensive food prices on the planet. But is it any good to start your business there? Let's talk about it now! Hi, I'm Oliver and welcome back to the channel Ask Me Startup, where we talk about startups, small businesses and the world that surrounds them. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and pushing the notification bell so YouTube lets you know whenever I'm uploading new content. If you're into startups, if you want to start a business, if you have a startup, please feel free to download our free startup checklist, link in the description below. Today's topic, Norway. Is it a good place to start your business? Now, let's get first familiar with some facts about Norway. Norway is the most eastern Scandinavian country and it has borders with Sweden and Russia in the far north. Its capital is Oslo and it is also the largest city of the country. The GDP per capita is roughly around $70,000 US, which is already telling you that this is a very wealthy country. Its population is roughly 5.3 million and it is not part of the European Union. Nonetheless, due to the fact that Norway has very rich oil grounds, it is one of the richest nations on the planet. They are actually using the income from the oil wisely, and I would say among the wisest among any countries on the planet, as they are just allowing 4% of revenue to be used otherwise than investing in future pension funds. Like Sweden, the Scandinavian country is a high tax, high income, high maintenance country. That means that you pay a lot of taxes and the wages are extremely high. Nonetheless, despite the similarities between Sweden and Norway, the Norwegians are twice as risk averse than the Swedish are. And that has some impact on the way people perceive to start a business. Because if you want to understand how is it if you want to start a business there, we look at the workforce and we figure out that, of course, they have one of the best educated workforces out there. They're on par with all the neighbors. They're on par with all the Western European countries. But they're not as entrepreneurial as, for instance, the Swedish or the Danish. That gives you an indication why you might not find so many popular Norwegian brands. I mean, there is Stad Oil, which is an oil company. You go like, okay, wait a minute. So any startups? I looked at the list of startups that they claim to be successful. And to be honest, from my perspective, none of them doesn't even tell me a single thing. The next biggest company besides Stad Oil would be Telenor, which is telecommunications. Again, nothing startup-ish. Nothing. If we go to the legal part, we know and we happen to see that, of course, Norway has a very well established legal framework. There's hardly any corruption and is on par with all its neighboring countries, which means they have a fast, responsive governments and institutions to help you grow your business. Furthermore, due to the fact that Norway is a rich country and many people made a fortune with oil, it is easy for people to get access to startup funding, at least for the initial rounds. If you are looking for some funding around, let's say, eighty to $200,000 US, you will be able to find abundance of capital available. If you want to go into larger rounds, it becomes more tricky. We're also aware that the Norwegian government has put up a lot of funds and efforts to support small companies with grants and loans to boost their proceedings. However, did it pay off? I'm not so sure yet. Now we have to acknowledge that Norway is evolving a startup ecosystem, but it is not on the top 15 list as of yet. But we see them trying to improve the situation. But how successful are they? Reality is, and that is from personal experience, it will be very hard to start off any business from Norway due to some very simple facts. And I'm not going to talk about taxes because taxes are something the Swedish have to deal as well and they're doing great with it or the Danish. But it has to do with the way the government sets up 
the rules and regulations for companies and wages. First of all, let's talk about wages. Norwegian wages are among the highest on the planet. They're in a top 10 ranking list and it makes it almost impossible for any new hire to have a lower income than before. Meaning, if you had a job that was giving you $120,000 US a year, and you're then thinking about, ah, I want to go to the startup. The startup may not pay you less than 120,000. Actually, it has to pay you a little bit more. That, of course, disables a lot of startups to acquire appropriate workforce in Norway. Because A, it, kicks, it kills your cash burn rate immediately. B, many startups cannot afford such high salaries. Simple. Then we have to talk about option. It is very difficult, and I'm not going to go into details on this, in the Norwegian tax system to have deducted options available for your employees. I don't know the specifics on Norway. All I've read is that it is a challenge to do so. And actually, if you are in a startup, if you work in a startup, options are one of the things you want. Why? Because if that startup survives or if it is valuable or becomes valuable, that is when you make the big bucks. It's not when it's not about your wage in the first place. It's about the opportunity and the chance. And then it multiplies by a factor of 10 or 20 or whatever. But that seems to be difficult in Norway. Then there's a third factor that we have to take into consideration. It is difficult to get foreign people to work, which brings me to the point. Is there a Norwegian startup visa? Short answer, no. That is really frustrating. If we go to the website from the government, we can see that, yes, they have a very formal, very clear, you know, pathway for people to apply for a working visa. But it is complicated and regulated and you need a lot of documents and a lot of requirements need to be met. These are all outdated systems from the time when Norway was an oil and fishing nation that was or is still rich. And now they're actually trying to prevent migration into their welfare state. There is a reason why Norway is not part of the European Union, because there would be a net cash payer. Why? Because they're so rich and they have accumulated the largest pension fund in the world. And everybody who lives and works in Norway has a certain right of a certain amount to that pension fund. Maybe that is also the reason why the Norwegians are so risk averse, because they know everything has been set up for them. They don't, they're not afraid to lose anything, but they might not have the motivation to do otherwise. I will give you an example. The Norwegians complain about services in their own country because people are not the most service oriented from their perspective. They rather go to Sweden. Now the Swedish complain about the service orientation of their own working force in Sweden. Hence they love to go to Denmark. Now you see that cascade what's happening? The wealthier a state is, and the more it takes care of its inha inhabitants, the better those people are situated and the less risk they have. But at a certain tipping point, it seems like it's tipping over towards the fact that people are not motivated to do more. For Norway, that is despite the fact that they actually have a after the oil plant, because they know one day the oil will be running out, they will not be able to sell anymore. And then they have to come up with other industry to replace them. Hence, they're trying with the startup ecosystem, but they're nowhere close where Sweden is. Maybe that's the reason why Sweden has managed to get good internationally recognized startups off the ground as of today, and Norway hasn't. So coming back to the question, is Norway a good place to start your business? My personal answer, yeah mediocre. Yes, you can get good startups in the fintech and maybe in the healthcare industry, maybe even in maritime because they're of course big in maritime. But the fact that it's hard or difficult to get proper workforces and be able to pay them, the fact that 
if you get a government grant that is somewhat limited around 300,000 and you have to pay 100,000 plus for uh, proper employees, tells you already that you're lost faster than you are lost in other countries because you run out of cash. Hence, my recommendation is to take a look at Sweden as of now, if you want to start a business in similar areas than in Norway. All right, everybody, I hope this was helpful for you. I'm looking forward to the comments and discussions with you. If you are living in Norway and starting a business, just tell me what you think about the system. Let's have a discussion. Thank you very much for watching and making it that far in the video. Please subscribe and I'm going to see you next time.